this should be a fairly simple question to answer. What's new in Nextcloud? Uh, however, it, we'll see if I get there, and maybe you'll vote whether I answer that. Uh, the reason it's difficult is that it turns out Nextcloud can do a lot, way more than even I, know, I realized. Uh, at the end of the talk, because um, I threw this together fairly quickly and we'll, I have no idea how long it's going to take, uh, I'm happy to answer any questions. I don't know all the answers, but we're lucky enough to have Frank here, who's the founder of Nexo. He's sitting in the shadows over there. Um, so he may be able to back me up if you ask the really hard ones. Uh, this is a question I think I could probably answer, and you got a little bit of my story there. So my name is Brent, for those of you uh, who don't know me. I know a bunch of you, and we met last night too, which is really fun. Uh, I've been co-hosting with Jupiter Broadcasting for five years now, something like that, four or five years. Uh, so doing podcasting. And uh, I never thought I'd be doing that, but here we are. Uh, and the crew at JB are pretty awesome, but the community is even better, I would say. So those of you who are part of it, thank you. Uh, now, I've recently joined Nextcloud as a marketing manager in North America, it says right there. And so I'm trying to spread the good word of open source and privacy respecting technologies and frankly, my love of Nextcloud, uh, just with all of you and with folks in North America and all over the world. So uh, hopefully that I'm accomplishing. So Nextcloud. When I say Nextcloud, I mean, you probably have some thoughts of what it does if you're familiar with Nextcloud. If you're not, I'll give a quick overview. Um, but uh, Nextcloud for me, uh, in the last five years, I've run my own personal instance and somehow convinced a bunch of people to join me. So my particular instance has 10 users, 10 active users, that's important. There's like 18 total users, but that's a different story. Um, and so I've been a Nextcloud advocate for a long time, way before even being part of the Nextcloud team. Um, and I thought, oh yeah, this piece of technology is amazing at a few things. File syncing is a place where it found great success in the past. Uh, but also I've used it to de-Google my own personal life, so using it for contact syncing, calendar syncing, I mean, many of you know this already. Uh, some of you even use it for syncing fo photos and stuff. Uh, so it's really great for that, and I think it's well known for those properties. Um, but it turns out that I've learned a lot, and my definition of Nextcloud has changed quite a bit. So Nextcloud uh, is extremely extensible, which uh, I knew, but to the extent is what's new to me. So I have discovered from the Nextcloud conference that I attended uh, last month that it is like formable into whatever niche that you need it to be. I met some people who are using it to share CAD documents and annotate CAD documents and like draw on them and share them with clients and things like that. I had no idea I could do that. But of course, it has a plugin system uh, with a bunch of apps that is really helpful. Uh, other wild examples, as I was just browsing through the App Store uh, this morning, is like you could do uh, show 3D models, you could do mind maps or track your own health if you wanted to. Um, project management, of course. Uh, you could also run a SIP phone on your next cloud if that's of interest to you. And if you need to send a fax, there's also an application for that, just in case. So, uh, so the nice thing about that is that you know, Nextcloud, when you first install it, has these base apps, which are really helpful for content collaboration with a bunch of people. So if you need to collaborate on office documents or you know, share contacts with people, et cetera, it's really great at that. But you can then just tweak it to become whatever you want. And we'll touch on that a little bit later and how, how maybe you can help. Um, so my definition of Nextcloud has changed because now it does, it's this whole world, really. The whole new world, you know? Um, now, a question I sometimes get is, hey, Brent, you, like, you've joined the Nextcloud team. What's it like being on the team? Uh, and I really enjoy that question because a fear I had was like, you know how they say, never meet your heroes. Well, I was a huge fan of the Nextcloud for like five years before joining the team. And um, it turns out that they're even better, you know, once you get to know the people who work at Nextcloud and the like deep values that are held at uh, like solving all the problems, so open sourceness and transparency and all that. Um, so I would say, you know, I met my heroes at Nextcloud, Frank included, but also many other members on the team, and they're even better in person and when you get to know them. So if you ever had the chance at an event or something, I mean, Frank's here, so maybe you could, you know, I'll jump and ask him questions later. But um, 
every single person from engineers to like the people in the marketing team and etc um, are just amazing and that's true of these communities too so I guess I shouldn't have been surprised um, but that's good news right now uh, I mentioned some values that are always super important that match up with my own which is why I think uh, they also match up with yours open source is super interesting uh, and super vital as well and taking that to uh, solve all of the problems. Um, privacy first, transparency, and also what's neat is many users of all different shapes have these ideals in mind as well. Like so home labbers or the one user who only has their one user on their one computer locally at their home, but also like my father included, Noah's father, you know, uh, and, but also enterprises in government and education where there's like a hundred thousand users on some instances. So uh, that is really neat. It's, so again, it's just extensible and it can shape into whatever you need and grow with you, which is super cool. Um, <clears throat> now, uh, have you guys heard of artificial intelligence? <laughs> uh, so it turns out, of course, it's very exciting, interesting, pushing the envelope. Uh, there's a lot changing really quickly, but it, of course, has some issues that uh, we should talk about and try to solve. Um, so some issues, for example, uh, carbon footprint is a big one. Chris, uh, if you want to talk to Chris about carbon footprint and Bitcoin, that would be a thing that you can get him talking about for a while. Um, but we should worry about these things. Uh, there's some eth ethical issues with artificial intelligence, like biases and such. Um, also we've seen some rather large businesses, Apple, Goldman Sachs, Samsung, forbid the use of uh, third-party artificial intelligence like ChatGPT for fear of having their private data be shared with other businesses unintentionally. So these are things that are important to think about. Um, you know, it's, it's fun to tinker with the artificial intelligence, but um, keep that in mind because there's already a ton of evidence of it happening. So, you know, don't share your medical information on there or something. Um, <clears throat> so Nextcloud, uh, we, because we believe in you know, transparency and all that, decided to come out with the ethical AI rating system. Now in Nextcloud, you can use a few different artificial uh, intelligence uh, tools, but it, it's important to know how those are playing with your information. So um, artificial intelligence can make your life easier, of course, uh, but this ethical AI rating system helps you decide which ones you want to enable in Nextcloud because most of the artificial intelligence features are disabled by default. You can enable them as you like. Um, so the important things are, uh, you know, is the code open source? So can you change it if you want it to be, I don't know, more environmentally friendly, for instance, or uh, to do something that you like? Another uh, rate part of our rating is the training model freely available. That's really important, allows you to run it wherever you'd like, for instance, uh, including in your own data center and increases some privacy for you. Uh, the other one is the training data freely available. So that way you can look at that data, determine if there are any biases, and retrain the model if you so like. So we wanted to implement artificial intelligence with a lot of flexibility. So if you want to use, for instance, ChatGPT, you can from the interface. Uh, so that's your choice. So you can take um, maybe a different approach and mix and match them and turn them on as you'd like. Uh, so uh, there's an interface to make these selections and, and enable them. But we worked hard to ensure that those features are available for you. So translations and text processing, dictation as well, and there's a whole bunch more coming as well. Um, Now what's really important to us is, of course, uh, making them open source and making them as local as possible as well. So, it, uh, <clears throat> so it's possible to use ChatGPT, for instance, or DeepL, DALI as well. Uh, but with that focus and with keeping that ethical AI rating system in mind, uh, we came up with some other options that I think you'll find really interesting. So these are a few uh, artificial intelligence and machine learning features that are already running 100% local uh, on your own Nextcloud. Some of them you may not even know are happening. So there's, uh, for example, facial recognition. 
is already happening completely on your own Nextcloud instance. So none of your photos are being sent to other third parties. Uh, we have a smart inbox in uh, Nextcloud Mail that's trained on your own server as well. Uh, call transcripts, for instance, are another example that are generated without uh, your data leaking. There's a whole bunch there, but I, you know, we got to run through them. Now, earlier this year, a promise was made at Nextcloud that uh, we would have an alternative remote large language model, uh, an alternative to remote large language models such as ChatGPT. So, in many cases, you don't want your information to leak. And I am happy to tell you that today uh, we have a Nextcloud okay. assistant that you can run in your Nextcloud. Uh, it's able to um, be run completely from your own server, so all your data stays on your server and does not get sent to other third parties. So this is an industry first, and uh, we think a really important step. So um, we present this to you, and we think it's super, super important. Now it's based on a large language model and is 100% open source, as I mentioned. It runs fully uh, self-hosted on your own premises. Now, interface for how you reach the Nextcloud Assistant. If you see at the top right there, there is uh, the Nextcloud Assistant uh, symbol, which should come up. There you go. <clears throat> you can find it at the top of your screen in Nextcloud Hub anytime you need it, so it's just always there. Now, when you click there, you can ask the Assistant to do something for you. Uh, there are a bunch of possibilities, and they're being added all the time. So th in this example, you can generate a headline for a piece of text that you've written. Pardon my slow laptop. <clears throat> uh, so you can take those results and uh, place them in your work if you'd like to. <clears throat> Uh, we also, though, though that's available everywhere for you, there are some special integrations uh, that are super important. So Nextcloud Assistant shows up in, in text when you're editing text. Um, so if you highlight a piece of text, for instance, uh, I apologize, my laptop is trying to keep up. I mean, it's Saturday, right? So my laptop's supposed to be off today. <laughs> Someone knows me well. <clears throat> <laughs> that was your job a few days ago. The new RAM is showing up today. Yeah, not soon enough. <clears throat> uh, so when you, uh, I apologize, let me go back. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> Can you ask this H into my machine and just like... <laughs> okay, well I'll just ad-lib then while this is freaking out here. Um, so the Nextcloud Assistant is also available in Nextcloud Mail, and you can, uh, <laughs> I guess that's just gonna auto go. <laughs> This'll be fun. Uh, you can have it, um, let's say you have a mail thread, you can have it just kind of summarize an entire mail thread for you, which is really super handy. We've all been there, you know, you got 12 people trying to reply to a bunch of stuff, so if you just need a summary, that is a super helpful feature. Uh, in text, as I was trying to show earlier, um, you can also highlight text and you'll you'll get the little Nextcloud Assistant icon right there in your text editing. And you can uh, click there and get a bunch of options like summaries, you can ask it to generate text for you, etc. cetera. Uh, is this gonna behave? Uh, yeah. So for instance, thread summaries. Um. Now it can also answer emails for you. Now don't use this too, too often, I guess. <laughs> Uh, and, and it's somewhat early days for artificial intelligence. Many of you have played with it or at least looked, but it, these are really promising in a, in a variety of ways. So um, I think you should try, try these things. Um, Nextcloud is, I think, really fun because you can try a bunch of different AI technologies in one place if you wanted to. Just click it on and give it a try and see how that behaves. Go to the next one, you know. Uh, so it's actually a neat, like, central place to try a few different types of artificial intelligence, which is sort of fun. Oh, computers! <clears throat> uh, I mentioned it can generate text for you. So this is in an email, for instance. 
Now, uh, Nextcloud Talk, if you're familiar with Nextcloud Talk, we uh, have, you can do messaging there with video calling as well. And so you can find the Nextcloud Assistant in Talk as well. Uh, it can generate text for you there uh, directly in your chat messages. So if you're collaborating with a team and you're trying to throw ideas together or deciding, you know, is a pineapple pizza authentic? That's yes. a good question. <laughs> <laughs> These are important questions that we need answered. Um, <laughs> you can also insert images into your chat as well, if you have the right artificial intelligence enabled. Um, so there you go. And soon it'll also be possible in Nextcloud Talk to have conversations with the artificial intelligence, so a conversational interface. Uh, that's coming in the next couple of weeks. <clears throat> We're embracing the power of artificial intelligence, and I, I hope the message comes across that it, it's not just like the new flashy thing that everybody's trying to latch on to. Uh, I think in this case, we're looking at our, our artificial intelligence in a totally different way. Um, it can be, we're working right now to train artificial intelligence on your local data, which is a really neat feature. And um, I think that is unique and different because like now everything's under your roof and it's not being sent to who knows where or being used by other people without you knowing. So, uh, so it's, I think, keep an eye on where this is going. We have another release coming out in December. Uh, there's some super interesting t things coming up that I don't want to tease too much, uh, but it's worth looking at. Now we have a second feature I mean, there are tons of features that have come out recently, but there's a second one that I think would be really interesting to, uh, to all of you. Um, so building an xCloud app, I've never done it, so I can't answer specifics, but um, for those who are building nextcloud apps, that has previously um, been done in PHP. PHP is uh, super popular, really powerful. Nextcloud is written in, in PHP as well, and uh, so far the apps that have been written have had um, uh, direct access to the core of Nextcloud, which has, of course, its advantages. Um, but wouldn't it be nice if you could write a Nextcloud app in any language that you'd like? Uh, everybody has a preference. I mean, Wes is closure, uh, so you yeah, know, right? I know you. Um, so we're happy to share that now there's a framework in place and you can write uh, your own favorite Nextcloud app in any language that you'd like. Uh, I, I didn't, this is not an exhaustive list, so if your language is not there, I apologize. <laughs> and actually the list kind of like, it's going, I swear. <laughs> uh, so these applications are, it's a new way of writing applications for Nextcloud, so we're not deprecating the old way, so it's not like all the old applications that just vanish tomorrow, you know, when I say go. Um, but um, it's a new way of interacting with Nextcloud. Uh, so using the powerful OCS API, if you're familiar with it. Uh, there's a whole bunch of benefits to doing it this way. I mean, one is that you get to use your favorite language. Uh, but there's also a stability angle to it. So um, let's say one of the applications that you have installed has a bug in it that you know wasn't caught before it was sent up there. Well, by having applications be, um, uh, what is the word I'm looking for? Having the applications be um, independent means that uh, if one goes down, it won't take the entire system down. So that's happening in the background through some Docker orchestra orchestration. Uh, so you may even be able to distribute compute, for instance. So if you've written a, a Nextcloud app that handles uh, artificial intelligence, for instance, you can have some compute over here that is, you know, has a few fancy GPUs in it and can do some of that processing. But maybe your Nextcloud instance, you don't want to on that machine, because that's you know specifically for calculating our artificial intelligence stuff. So um, distributing the compute is actually a really interesting development in, in how we're uh, designing this new app ecosystem. Uh, that said, there's uh, also some APIs that can be separate for each app. So there's um, some really interesting ways that this will change app development in Nextcloud, and really is the future of app development as well. So if you're interested, 
uh, please get a hold of us. We're happy to help. There are, we've written a few uh, sample applications so far, written in Python. And uh, I, I, this is, personally, as a secret, uh, this is one of my, uh, I'm most excited about this feature for what it means for Nextcloud in the future. Uh, the artificial intelligence, of course, is also very exciting. Uh, there's a ton of other features in like our groupware and Office and things that I can't mention today because we have a limited amount of time. Um, but I think these are the ones that I thought, knowing you, I thought you would like this the most. So hopefully I got that right. <coughs> so um, really, the theme I'm hoping to present today is that this is, this is really your next cloud. So next cloud, you can install apps and shape it and make it be yours and to solve your problems that are necessarily going to be different than what your friend is solving as well. Uh, hopefully, with the artificial intelligence, you can craft it to be your own as well. If, if privacy is really important for you, then we have that option. And if you're happy to use ChatGPT because you think it's great, well, that option is there for you as well. You can enable these things and disable them as you'd like. Um, <clears throat> but also with uh, designing Nextcloud applications, you can do it in your favorite language where you're familiar. Maybe you have a great idea, but you didn't know PHP at all, and so you didn't share with the world your great idea and your work. Well, now hopefully uh, you're willing to do that, and we encourage you to as well. Uh, I would also encourage you to, uh, well, the easiest thing to do on a slide is to send you to nextcloud.com, but we just came out with uh, Nextcloud Hub 6 recently, and uh, there's a great release video that we put out there that goes into detail about some of the changes that we've brought to the greater ecosystem of Nextcloud. As I mentioned, I can't mention them all here. Uh, and there's a wonderful blog post there. It's super detailed as well. So if you're interested in, in learning a little bit more there. And if you love GitHub, because I'm sure some of you do, um, the Nextcloud Assistant is there. So if you'd like to poke around and have a look or just see what's happening. Uh, it also is a launching point for looking at the large language models that we're using and such. So that's a good place uh, to start if you want to dive in a little bit more. And uh, I suppose this slide means uh, thank you so much. That is. <laughs>